Do you like reading the note that much? <laughs> yes. The things I have read here remind me of the old times, before I came here at the palace. Are these reflections in this note, written by Master Su, the one you've always mentioned to me? Yes. Judging from what I have read, I have the impression that the writer is a very bright and generous man. Yet according to what you have said about Master Su, he's very cunning, cold-hearted, and a very worldly man. Master Su has many facets. I was chilled by his insidious strategies at times, but there are times when I think he has his own principles that is unlike any common man. Why, Mother? Why do you ask about him all of a sudden? You are ambitious in your desire. To seek justice for your eldest brother in the Linz. To gain the throne and restore the court's loss. For that I am proud of you, son. Nevertheless, I have no power. And I cannot provide you with that much help. Since you have someone who stands by your side in order to help you succeed, you will have to trust in his ways. I know, Mother. I also feel the same. I believe this Master Su is a very good man. If he was ambitious, he would have allied with Prince Yu and the Crown Prince. Why did he choose to help you instead? His loyalty is with you. You have always been very noble, son. I don't have to remind you to do what is right. Still, I do think that Master Su is a rare find. He's not like the others. Give him your trust. Treat him in a kinder way whenever you're with him. However this will all turn out, never forget that he chose to be your ally and be by your side no matter what. Mother, you've already said that. I have. Not long after you read that note, you asked me who the writer was. And then you told me the same thing. That I should treat him better. And that I should give him my trust. Why'd you have to repeat it today? Are you afraid I'll forget? Or did you really find Master Su that impressive? Sorry, son. Old people tend to forget things so easily. See that? I completely forgot that I told you about that, and now I've repeated it again. I've already grown old, son. It can't be helped. I'm sorry, Mother. I should not have said that. That's all right. Don't worry. I have a grown-up son who has a goal to achieve. With that, I'm very pleased. I no longer care about what happens outside. I just want you to look after yourself. You have to make sure you're always safe, huh? Yes, Mother. Your Highness? What is it? Your Highness, a message just came from Wuying Palace. His Majesty is coming here to visit you. We must prepare to welcome him. Very well. Come here. I've prepared two boxes of desserts. One for you. And the other is for Master Su, all right? It's my way of thanking him for helping you, son. <laughs> Thank you, Mother. I'll be leaving now. I'll come visit you again. Let's go, Your Highness.
What do you mean you still couldn't get the book back? Is it because Jing Yan isn't willing to return it yet? Uh, oh, well, no, it's not that. <clears throat> you see, P Prince Jing said that the note was borrowed by Her Highness Consort Jing. Lin Chu. Please, do not worry. Do not be alarmed. I'm sure she's just bored, since she's been in the palace for years, so she must find your book very entertaining. Hey, didn't you say those two characters were very small? So I'm sure that she won't even notice them at all. You kept them hidden. <laughs> They're all gone. I hope you're right, Commander. Your Highness. The reorganization of Chanzi Battalion is done. Shall we report it to the Minister of War? All right. Your Highness, you've been studying this book for days. Is there something wrong with it? That's precisely why I'm studying it. To look for something wrong. Is there a problem with Master Su's notes? I've read these notes over and over again. I even copied them on paper. But no matter how I tried to arrange them, I still could not find anything wrong with them. <sighs> well, that's a relief. Should that not be a good thing? I suppose. But if this is just an ordinary travel note, why did Master Su seem to have lost his composure when I borrowed it? Meng Chi has never been fond of reading books, so why did he come and ask for it? Even my own mother, who has been living in the palace for years. What was the content in any part of this book that made her so impressed with him? Why does she keep repeating that I should have more faith in him? Excuse me, your highness. Your mother just sent two more boxes of desserts. Very well. Put them in my private chambers. Yes, your highness. I've noticed that sending two boxes of food has become a habit of Her Highness. Deliver this book to the residence of Commander Mom. Very well. Your Highness! Your Highness! <coughs> What's with you? Why are you in such a hurry? Your Highness, you have to receive an Imperial Edict outside. It's just an Imperial Edict. Haven't we received many of them in the past? This is different. It's now being brought by Eunuch Gao. Eunuch Gao? Your Highness, Eunuch Gao came here himself. Could this be it? Xiao Jingyan, the seventh son of His Majesty the Emperor, is hereby promoted to first rank prince with the crown of five pearls as a recognition for his impressive accomplishments and for his loyalty to the kingdom thus ordered. I thank my father for his reward. Thank you, Eunuch Gao. Your Highness, to be a first rank prince is truly a great reward. You should submit a report to the Secretariat Office to express your thanks. The Ministry of Rights has prepared the new court attire and the crown for you. You must be wearing them when you appear before the court tomorrow to receive your golden seal and your certificates from His Majesty. From there, you must pray at the Ancestral Temple. Then you must see the Empress at Zhengyang Palace first, and then you will be free to see your mother. Remember, that is the ritual procedure. Do not go by the wrong order. Thank you for your instructions.
Majesty summons first rank Prince Jing to enter the court. Respects to you, Father. Grant the seal. Thank you for your majesty's reward. <laughs> You said I should obey my father and forget all about Prince Jing. Now what happened? He's been promoted to a first-rank prince of five pearls just like that! If he gains two more pearls, we'd be equals! Then I should congratulate your highness. Why must you congratulate me when Jing Yang was promoted? Jing Yang may have been promoted, which also means the crown prince will soon be ousted. Your much-awaited dream will soon come true. Why will I not applaud you for that? The Emperor always keeps things well balanced at the court. When he appointed the Crown Prince as his heir, did the Emperor not support you at the same time as well? It is merely a way to ensure the balance of your positions. And with Prince Jing promoted, it only means the Crown Prince will soon be removed. The Emperor only wants to establish a new balance, don't you think? I do know what you mean. I do understand my father's intentions. Although I can't accept the fact that after years of all my efforts, I've lost everything I had and gained nothing out of it. How can you say you have gained nothing? Your Highness has brought down the Crown Prince. He's confined at the Eastern Palace and will never have the chance to lash back. His time has ended, and he doesn't need to wait long to be stripped of his title. I spent an entire decade trying to strip him of his title. Do I have to spend that much time to be rid of Jing Yan as well? Now that I have been promoted, your situation here at the palace will be different from the past. How does the Empress treat you? Don't worry about me, son. I have lived in this palace for years. I can look after myself. I've never harmed anyone, but I will not be stepped on either. The Empress knows that about me. <laughs> well, so do I. You are smart, and I know you can handle her. I remember you saying that, too. When the Crown Prince was confined, Commander Meng accepted Yunuk Gao's kindness and suggested that you took him into your fold. Right. But Master Su did not agree to it. He said, Gao Chan would place his own safety first, so it will be too risky to take him in. Moreover, if the future works to our favor, even if it does not support us now, with his personality, he will still be here to serve us. I believe your advisor has another reason to have disagreed. Are you not aware of it? Mother, what do you mean? If you took Yunuk Gao in, it will be very risky. But the benefits he can give you is much more than anyone else. Master Su knows this, yet he refuses to do it, since he's aware that it can also place us both in danger. <sighs> hmm. 
That's right. If we employed Gao Chan, it will put you in danger as well. And that's the last thing I want to happen. So now you can see Master Su's intention. He really means well. Your Highness is mistaken. How can the Crown Prince and Prince Cheng be the same? The Crown Prince was the chosen heir, to take over the throne someday. While Prince Cheng is just a five-pearl prince, who only grew popular because of his new title. Now that the Crown Prince will lose his title, you should feel proud, Your Highness. It is a great achievement. Although he must be ousted very soon, because if something happens to the Emperor anytime soon, Crown Prince will automatically take over the throne. And if you go against him, you would be charged for treason. I just hope you're right about everything. Farewell, Your Highness. I don't think that you can fool Prince Yu so easily this time, Chief. Well, if he doesn't act right away, he will never be able to go against the Crown Prince again. Eventually, we can no longer fool him. We should prepare for him this early, then. Who knows what dark thoughts he harbors in his mind right now. Well, don't I have you and Li Gang for that? Whenever you talk that way, I cannot help but feel very pressured, Chief. Then you should learn how to treat failure better. Do you know how much of that pressure he'd be willing to help you with? Wait. Hasn't Tonglu been coming? Don't rush. Take it slow. Watch your step. That's it. Come. Watch your step. Sit over there. I look at it. Maybe I should call for a doctor. Don't bother. Seeing a doctor requires money. I just sprained my ankle. I'll feel better when I dip it in water. Unfortunately, I'm afraid I can't deliver just yet. Hey, don't worry too much about that. Look, I'll go find a doctor to have you checked. Don't worry about it. I've saved some money. My employer just increased my wage. If you've been saving up, you should not be wasting it on me. You should keep saving them. Then find a good woman you can marry someday. Get going. All right. Come. You should be attending to your work. Right. Chi <laughs> <laughs> Hong, just tell us. What else have you heard here? I must know every rumor spreading in the palace. Your Majesty. I have heard many things. Since the promotion of Prince Jing, apart from the rumors spreading outside, some gossips in the palace have said that Prince Jing is not so well known before. But now he is famous, because Prince Jing's very notable achievements are no different from Prince Yu's. No different? Just what were his achievements? How can Jingyan even be compared to my son? Mother, please calm down. What else have you heard? Rumor has it, that Prince Jing was unknown to many, not for his lack of virtues, but because he was not favored. If one considers it, Prince Jing has acquired several military feats over the years, which has not been achieved by any of the princes, including Prince Yu. <laughs> Xiao Jingyan has always been in the army. Why must his feats even matter in court? Well, others have said that he stayed at the capital in the past year and has closed many cases His Majesty assigned to him. So he also has much political achievements. As for his birthright... Your Highness began a debate in court before the new year. 
right after Noble Consort Yu recovered her title, you have clearly expressed that the Crown Prince was not born from the Empress and therefore has the same status as your Highness. And now someone intentionally brought up that subject again and said that if that were the case, then all the princes are illegitimate sons and also... about... About what? There are talks that Consort Jing has already gained the Emperor's love and may also be promoted in the near future. It's also said that your highness was fostered by the Empress and that your birth mother was a concubine who died from childbirth, which is why the Emperor barely mentions anything about her, since her status is really very humble. <laughs> Jingyan is just a five pearl prince. He can never be my son's equal. And how can Consort Jing replace me? She has lived at the Inner Palace for years. Why hasn't the Emperor loved her then? She cannot do better than noble Consort Yu, who strove for years to win the Emperor's love. Your Majesty, Your Highness, please do not be mad. I am merely sharing what I have heard to you. All right. Fine then. Since everyone believes that Prince Jing is my equal, I'll prove them otherwise. A political feud is not a simple matter, and Prince Jing lacks the experience for it. I can suppress him right away. He will be an easier target than the Crown Prince. I'll cut him down. Let's see what he can do. You have all been summoned. Come in, please. You may leave. Very well. Your Majesty, I suggest that you move to the warm partition of Wenhui Hall by tomorrow. Hmm. Then have it arranged. But I don't think it will be a cold winter. I'm fine. Even tonight, I still feel quite nice and warm. <laughs> I never thought that the medicated bath that Consort Jing prepared for you would do you a lot of good. <laughs> Go 
Ryo-chan. Yes. After the levy tomorrow, summon Prince Yu, the Secretariat General and the Revenue Minister. Very well. Oh, yes, sir. And Prince Jing. As you wish. Permission to leave, Your Highness. Mm. We've been discussing so many issues every day, and you only stop when night falls. Your Highness is truly hardworking. So are you and our men. Back then, we did not have this much to do. Your Highness, no one's complaining about that. All our men are in high spirits. In fact, they're all enthusiastic about your ideas. Jian Ying, you are the first who knew that I wished to fight for the throne. I'm certain that you must have thought I was mad when you first heard about it, right? <sighs> well, it certainly seemed impossible back then. <sighs> well, I don't know much, but no matter what you decide to do, Your Highness, I will not hesitate to assist you in any way. I know that. That's why you're the only one I confided to. To be very honest, I was at a loss and felt no sense of confidence during that time. I even recalled asking Master Su something. I asked, how should I tell my subordinates that I aim to fight for the throne without distressing them? And what did Master Su say? He said, you don't have to tell them. When the time comes, they will already know it. Your Highness, do you mean our soldiers already know that they know it. That is what Master Su has foreseen, and now's the time. Oh. I have said nothing to them, but they already know it. It is destined, and even if I wanted to stop right now, they will only urge me to move forward. That is true, Your Highness. You are so right. In the past, all they ever talk about is how low their wages are and how less their provisions are. All you can hear are nothing but complaints. Now they're discussing ways to have effective military forces and how to implement the policy on horses. They're now so different from how they used to be. <sighs> Still, Your Highness, no matter what... I know, Chan Ying. Even if I never get to gain the throne, you and they, the most loyal men I have now, will never leave my side. I'm glad your highness knows that. Your highness, the revenue minister wishes to see you. Sentry? It's very late. Why did he come? It's rather late, minister. Is it an urgent matter? After the first frost, I submitted a summary of the statements of the autumn harvest on various farmland areas of the kingdom to the Grand Secretariat. This is the report copy. Please have a look. Those five states are now suffering from famine since their fields were plagued by locusts. Based on their population and their calamity situation, I have estimated the amount of money the Ministry of Revenue needs to support them and have submitted it to His Majesty earlier. It seems you've already planned out the disaster relief. What do you need me for? Whenever calamities like this occur, His Majesty would assign it to either Prince Yu or the Crown Prince. Once they get the money, they would keep half of it for themselves, and then divide portions of the other half to the local officials. Whatever is left will not be enough for the farmers. We should be giving our full support to the people who tend to our farmlands. And if this gets assigned to Prince Yu, the victims would be fortunate if they even received 30% of their relief money. If this extortion does not stop, there will be more people dying and living in poverty, which can eventually spark our evolution. How long has this been going on? Look at this, Your Highness. That's the report on Li Chou. After the Crown Prince managed the winter relief during Kai Wen's 20th year reign, Behind it is the report, 
of the provincial governor after Prince Yu handled the drought relief in eight states in the third year of Cheng Peng's reign. Unfortunately, provincial governor died before the report could be delivered to the secretariat. And on the seventh year of Cheng Peng's reign... Enough, Minister Shen. I already see your point. What do you want me to do? I beg you, Your Highness. Try your best to attain the task to deliver the disaster relief to those who need it. If His Majesty hands it over again to Prince Yu, there will surely be an uprising in the five states which he will again lie about to His Majesty. I beg you, do not let him do this. Do not let him suppress those poor farmers later after stealing their money. If we cannot look after them, our own citizens, then what kind of future will our kingdom be facing? Please, Your Highness. You are the only one I can count on. Minister Shanna, please. I am touched by your love for our kingdom. And I give you my word that I will do my best to fight for the task tomorrow. Minister Shen, I've read your report about the five states, although it is not as serious as the famine during the seventh year of Cheng Ping's reign. I shall assign someone who can handle that right away before it turns into a problem. Father, please do not worry. The harvests in our other farmlands have been very good, and we still have many grain reserves left. And the reserves we have at the National Treasury are quite sufficient. Since you have no objection to Minister Shen's estimated amount of money to be given, it's just a matter of assigning officials to deliver the reliefs. Allow me to do it. Hmm. Well, you've had the experience to deal with this in the past. It will take a big load off my mind, and I'm sure that you have your ways of dealing with that. Father. Yes, Jingan. What do you have in mind? Since your majesty has allowed me to handle certain tasks, I believe I've greatly improved. Delivering relief is very important. The one in charge need not to do everything himself. But in order to see the actual situation, he should go inspect the area. The five states that are suffering from famine cover a large area, some of which are bitterly cold. Since my brother hasn't left the capital all these years, how will he endure the harsh weather there? But I can. I've fought wars in the worst weather, and I'm strong enough to oversee things there. Father, allow me to offer my help. Let me take part in this task, so I can be of help to my older brother. Hmm... That's very thoughtful. Father! Jingyan may mean well, but I'm afraid I cannot accept his help. I'm not afraid to face any hardships if it is the only way to help the people. And it's not that I do not trust Jingyan, but he has very little experience. Giving disaster relief does not require the strength of someone who's fought battles. The people there are far too hungry to care about the presence of a prince. And I doubt he would know how to manage the distribution there. I've never managed that kind of distribution, but I do know the procedures. Since my brother is experienced with this, I'm sure you'll be able to guide me. Tell me, brother, once the relief is given, what kind of results do we have to witness before we can safely say that the famine is over? Once the victims can go on living with their money and food, then their famine is over. Is that so, father? Should not the one in charge make sure that famine never hits those areas again? The final purpose here is to avoid more deaths, avoid rebellion, survive winter, and to make sure that their lands will be cultivated for the next spring. Without these, the famine is not over yet. Hmm. jing -Yun, what you've suggested is very sensible. <laughs> You're right. It seems you are prepared for this. Prince Jing takes after you, Your Majesty. He has a fast wit in solving problems. It's an admirable trait you both share. His suggestions may sound smart, but they are easier said than done. Jing'an, do you have enough manpower? Do you know how their local governors operate? 
Didn't you promote a policy on horses? You've done so well with that, so how is it? There were so many twists and turns. Country officials are not easy to deal with. It will take you a long time to even learn how to communicate with them. The new policy cannot be promoted because of the Ministry of War. Eventually, they've carried it out successfully. As for the relief's distribution, it is the Ministry of Revenue who will be arranging that. Of course, Your Highness. That is our responsibility. <laughs> so you're hurling responsibility to the Revenue Minister. That's not the way to get things done, Jing Yan. Take your policy, for example. Since it could not be promoted smoothly due to the Ministry of War, are you sure no one will hinder you again next time? You are still very young, without enough experience and authority, so it's perfectly normal for some officials to refuse to obey you. You should learn how to win them to your side, so you can be able to control and make use of them. Didn't Mr. Liu mention that you have a quick wit? I suggest you first learn to win over the officials who have been giving you a hard time. Just let me deal with this task alone. I'm capable of handling this myself. What you have just said today, about winning officials over to control them, is something I do not wish to learn. Not now, or in the future. We all must abide by the rules of the court and provide help to our citizens. To bear one's own self-interest is not the kind of general attitude that should prevail in this court. And just what do you mean by that? How dare you say that in front of our father? That this court has a self-serving attitude? Jing Yan, you've just been promoted to first rank prince. Do you wish to be demoted right away? Why do you keep twisting my words intentionally? I said- Enough! Why do you have to keep arguing? Can't you talk more pleasantly before me? Father, I did not mean to offend you. But Jing Yan is insinuating something. Even before you, he always talks that way. And I thought he has changed after all these years. <laughs> <laughs> you old geezer. My sons are being inconsiderate, and you seem very happy about it. Uh, your Majesty, I don't think they are being inconsiderate. They argue because they are too considerate. You know, in my opinion, His Highness Prince Jing is very truthful. I consider that a good trait. He just says whatever he wants to say, and does not hide anything in his mind. Your Majesty, you are truly blessed with bright suns. <laughs> <laughs> and you are truly crazy. <sighs> your Majesty must learn to count your blessings. Oh, you should see my sons. They are far worse. But even if they are bothersome, I still am happy to have them. <laughs> all right, all right, enough. As the two of you, just what is the problem here? Is this matter even worth fighting about? Since you're both still arguing about handling the relief, you're delaying the delivery. Father, the disaster relief should not be delayed, since you still haven't decided. Minister Shen cannot hand over the amount. Just thinking about those poor people is unbearable to me. How about this? I'll reduce the expenses of my manor and hand over 30,000 tails of silver. Once Father has made a decision, the Ministry of Revenue can make the arrangements. Hmm? Jingwan. Are you sure? You're willing to use your personal money? Everything I have came from you. Everything you gave, Father. I'm willing to sacrifice to help those poor people. Those victims are your people, so I must share your kindness to them. Here's what I'll do. I shall gather all the gifts you've given me. That should make up for any shortages. It will help the victims, and it will help save your reputation for the delayed assistance. Hmm. Father. Hmm. You are truly considerate, which eases my heart. In the past, you have dealt with distributing the relief without even bothering me about it. Even when there had been angry mobs at that time, you have managed to suppress them. Jing Wan, since our aid is urgently needed, I'll entrust it to you. Your Majesty! I accept your order. Disaster relief is the duty of the court, so Prince Yu is not required to use his own money for it. Shen, deduct 30,000 tails of silver from the reported amount, repair them by batches, then send the money and relief goods to Prince Yu for arrangement. Be quick, we cannot delay. But your majesty... Enough. I'm feeling tired. You may leave. We shall go now, father. 